This video was sponsored by Card Kingdom. You can visit their store by using my referral link in the description below. Hi everyone, I'm Nitsa Hone, and it's Wednesday. And this month, that means it's time for another History of the Bin and Restricted List video. Last week we looked at part 28 where we looked at the first few months of 2020. The first five months of 2020 were pretty active. Cards like Mox Opal and Mycosynth Lattice had been around for a while, but got banned as a result of new cards they can interact with, and we also looked at how busted the companion mechanic was. This week we're picking up where we left off with part 29, which focuses on June and July of 2020, which were very busy months, even compared to the first part of 2020. For the first five months of 2020, there were a total of five cards that we had to cover. But in June and July of 2020, there were six cards that got banned for the first time. There were also seven other cards that got banned in June of 2020, but they weren't banned for gameplay reasons. These seven cards were those that were banned because they were deemed racially or culturally offensive. They were banned from all tournaments and also completely removed from Gatherer. We aren't going to cover those bans in this video because they weren't banned for gameplay reasons, and they also happen to be cards that aren't particularly important in competitive magic anyway. Also, remember, we only talk about formats that have premier level competitive events, so that means we aren't talking about Commander or Brawl. Additionally, I only talk about the cards that received a ban for the first time in a given year, since we look at the entire ban and restricted history of each card when we cover it for the first time. For example, Nexus of Fate got banned in Best of Three Standard in July of 2020, but we already covered that in a past video. All right, let's dive in with a look at the June 2020 announcement where two cards got banned, Agent of Treachery and Fires of Invention. Let's look at Agent of Treachery first. This seven mana creature comes with the powerful ability to give you control of opposing permanence. Notably, the effect does not end when the agent dies. It also comes with the additional upside of paying you off a ton for stealing opposing permanents, because if you manage to snag three of them, you start drawing three cards every instep. Yeah, this seven mana creature is definitely worth the investment, but the decks that got the agent banned didn't ever pay seven mana for it anyway. Instead, they looked to cheat it into play using what were then two new cards from Akoria, Luka, Copper Coat Outcast, or Winota, Joiner of Forces. Luka's minus two could allow you to do this if you constructed your deck correctly. If you made it so the only creatures in your deck were the agents, you could simply use the minus two and exile a creature token to grab the agent. And the decks that ran this combo also ramped, so it was usually even before turn five. Winona decks tended to be more aggressive, and they weren't all in on cheating the agent into play, but they had the powerful ability to get a lot of creatures into play for free, and the agent was one of the most busted things you could get. Getting Agent of Treachery into play ahead of schedule was way too easy, and one of the most powerful things you could do in standard, so many decks were going this direction. So, the agent had to be banned to make the format more diverse. Later in 2020, the agent also got banned in Historic for the same reasons. The other card that got the axe was Fires of Invention. This powerful enchantment allowed you to avoid paying any mana at all for spells, provided they had a mana value less than or equal to the number of lands you controlled. While you could only cast two spells in a single turn and only on your turn, that limitation didn't stop Fires decks from utterly dominating both Standard and Historic. It isn't that hard to see why, as casting two spells a turn like that, every turn, was massively powerful. Fires decks even ran the Luka Agent of Treachery combo we just looked at. Things got really absurd when Fires of Invention decks played cards with activated abilities, which meant you could not only cast two impressive free spells a turn, you could also generate a ton of value with your mana. This included creatures like Cavalier of Flames and Kenrith the Returned King. Though, as I said, by the time this ban happened, Fires decks were pretty much all in on the Luka Agent combo, but Wizards was concerned about Fires decks even in the absence of the Agent because there were still so many powerful things you could do. Ultimately, Fires also got banned in Historic for pretty much the same reasons, but in that format it got unbanned in February of 2022, but that's because they changed the card to make it less busted. In Historic and Alchemy, there are powered down and powered up versions of older cards, and of course, the Alchemy version of Fires of Invention is powered down, and now costs 5 mana instead of 4, and, so far, this increase in mana cost has done enough to prevent Fires of Invention from needing any further changes in the format. In fact, Fires of Invention isn't really a factor in either format. 
So that covers the June announcement. Let's move ahead to July, which was significantly more active. This was the month where both Fires of Invention and Agent of Treachery got banned in Historic, and it also featured another ban in that format, the banning of Winota, Joiner of Forces. We already saw Winota, of course. It actually got suspended in that June announcement, but the ban became permanent in Historic in July. Basically, Winota was just way too good. If you played a non-human on turns 1, 2, and 3, and then played Winota on turn 4 and swung with those three non-humans, there was basically no way you could lose, because you would get a bunch of humans into play for free, and they would be attacking, and they were indestructible until end of turn. Even without Agent of Treachery nonsense, this was massively powerful, so Winota had to get banned. So far, she hasn't been given a new Power Down version in Historic, so she remains banned, but that could change at some point. Also, in the brand new Explorer format, there are a lot of calls for Winota to be banned, and that could definitely go down in the near future. One card also got banned in Modern in this announcement, and that was Arkham's Astrolabe. We've seen a whole lot of Modern Horizons cards in the last few videos in this series, and here's another one. The Astrolabe might look a bit innocuous at first. I mean, it doesn't even produce mana. It only lets you filter it, but it turns out making a mana filter cantrip produce snow mana and only cost a single mana to cast is a big problem, especially because lots of decks can further take advantage of the card's typing, whether they're interested in snow or artifacts or both. You can also find ways to blink it to draw cards with it more than once. Basically, the Astrolabe let a bunch of decks play powerful cards across a variety of colors without any significant downside. In fact, there was more upside than downside to be had in playing the Astrolabe. It just kept getting shoved into way too many decks, and the format really became a good stuff soup kind of format. Banning the Astrolabe powered down that type of deck by taking away the great mana, and it led to the format becoming more diverse again. Notably, the Astrolabe also got banned in Popper back in 2019, and that isn't something I covered in the part of the series that covers 2019. Back then, I wasn't really covering Popper in the series, as it hadn't been given premier level events, but now that it has, we'll be covering it more in this series. At some point, I'll need to do an addendum to cover the bands that I didn't talk about in the past. Additionally, in 2021, the Astrolabe got banned in Legacy for the same reasons it got banned out of Modern. In that format, it was a big problem that the main ways to hate on greedy mana bases, like Wasteland or Blood Moon, just didn't do anything to stop the Astrolabe. So the format's usual checks and balances didn't work against Astrolabe decks, and they were just too good. The last two cards for us to talk about today are cards that got banned in Popper, Expedition Map and Mystic Sanctuary. Let's talk about the map first. Just like it does in Modern, Expedition Map was powering Tron decks in Popper. The goal of these decks is to get each of these three lands into play as quickly as possible, and the map enabled these decks to get to 7 mana on turn 3 a little too frequently. Now, Tron had long been part of the Popper metagame, but they had become increasingly powerful over the years, as powerful commons to ramp into were becoming more commonplace, like Dinrova Horror, which had its rarity downshifted in Modern Masters 2017. This ban was actually undone just a few months ago, in 2022, after the newly formed Popper Committee decided to ban a few other cards that were enabling Tron decks, and then unban the map. The goal there was to make it so that Tron decks could be part of the metagame, but not quite as powerful as they had been previously. Mystic Sanctuary was the other card to get the Banhammer in Popper. This land lets you put an instant or sorcery from your graveyard on top of your library, and it turned out this enabled a whole bunch of powerful loops, even in Popper. When combined with cards like Ghostly Flicker or Tragic Lesson, blue decks were capable of just putting counter magic on top of their deck over and over again to lock the opponent out of the game while they won with their Delver or other win condition. This could be combined with ways to recur those spells and draw cards so that you would have no problem making sure your opponent could just never do anything for the rest of the game. This is just one of the many loops that different blue decks could create to abuse the Sanctuary, so it had to be banned to weaken those decks, which were already pretty darn good in the first place. That wouldn't be the last time Mystic Sanctuary got banned, though. Obviously, if you could get some pretty great loops going in Popper, you can do even sillier things in other formats. So in 2021, Mystic Sanctuary also got banned in Modern. It created an even more powerful lock in Modern, where you combined it with Cryptic Command. You could choose one option that you needed, and then you'd also choose to bounce the Sanctuary, which you could then replay to get Cryptic Command back. 
Mana is good enough in Modern that getting it into play untapped wasn't much of a challenge either. You could even search it up with a fetch land because it has the island type, making it very easy to assemble this type of lock. This made blue base decks really strong in the format, resulting in its ban. The Sanctuary has gone on to a ton of success in the internal formats where loops like that are more on par with the power of the formats. So those are all the cards that got banned for the first time in June and July of 2020. Next week, we'll take a look at August. Yep, that's right. August 2020 was a month so filled with bans that we can do an entire episode on it. That does it for this episode of the History of the Banned and Restricted list. If you enjoyed this video, please like it and share it so that others can enjoy it too. If you want to make sure you catch future editions of this series and a whole bunch of other Magic the Gathering content, don't forget to subscribe. If you want to catch up on the other 28 parts of the History of the Banned and Restricted list, you should see the playlist on your screen shortly. Lastly, if you want to go the extra mile in supporting me and my work on this channel, you can on Patreon. Thanks for watching.